Hi everyone, my name is Mathieu. In this video I'll show you how I have did a carbon fiber print bed for my Ender 3 S1. So I'll go through the steps of making the plates and then doing some demos on 3D printed parts. So let me know in the comments what printer you're using. I might do some variations of this bed plate for the most common or like most requested printers down in the comments. So to start with, I'll mention that I'm mainly a carbon fiber um, channel. So I did a lot of carbon fiber work. Now I'm also doing like the adventures in 3D printing. I see a lot of opportunities. So if you, if this is new to you, make sure to check out my other videos. They might go into a bit more detail on the carbon fiber work than in this video. So this is mainly about printing on carbon fiber. So I prepared a stack of carbon fiber, so different orientations and types, just to make sure that the, the plate is not warping. So I have zero and 90 degree woven carbon fiber in different weights. And then I have some biaxial woven carbon fiber, so minus 45 degrees and plus 45 degrees. So to make this bed, I'll go through like the technique of uh, resin infusion. Resin infusion mostly will give you better results due to the compression with the vacuum. So I'll get a stable flat sheet uh, with a good amount of resin, not too much and not like less uh, resin. So that's the advantage of using uh, resin infusion. So if you checked my other videos, mostly, mainly on um, doing infusion, I would use the IN2 resin from Easy Composites. This being a build plate with mostly temperatures of 60 degrees and a nozzle of 200 degrees, I would need some higher temperature resin. So I've used the high temperature resin from Easy Composites. And if people might not know it's possible to infuse it, but use like smaller amounts or easy shapes to do it. So I mainly do a lot of work uh, around carbon fiber, but if you want to see my other projects or videos that will come, make sure to follow me on Instagram. You can find me under the username Mathieu Libert. So that's my name, Mathieu Libert. Um, so the resin infusion is done. So if you like this video so far, make sure to ring that bell, subscribe and leave a like just to make sure you don't miss future videos because I have some other IDs after doing this video. I've seen some improvements while using the plate so far. So I've let the plate cure for 12 hours at room temperature and then for 12 more hours into the oven. So it's important to post cure your high temperature resins because this will like enable you to go to higher temperatures. If you're not doing this, the sheet will only be like have a TG value up to the curing temperatures that you had. So mostly it would be room temperature that would be 30 degrees. I went till 120 degrees, ramping the temperature like gradually. So over 12 hours, it went till 120 degrees. And that way I'm sure I have a good TG value. So the, the plate won't warp under higher temperatures and will be stable till 120 degrees. So this is important because in the future, I also do some nylon printing, like have an enclosure. And I just want to be able that this plate is right for all materials that I'll do in the future as well. So I just prepared the cutoff, so like the measurements of the bed plate that I had on the Ender 3 S1. So that would be the original plate as a PC flex plate. Like I mentioned in the pre previous video, making the review of that printer is that I just didn't like it. So I, I prefer the glass bed that I had on my uh, Ender 5 Pluses. That's why I decided to go like on the roots of doing like a glass plate or in this case a carbon fiber plate that is stiff. So I've just cut off the edges up to the size that I need it. And then you'll see me use here. So the, the back of the plate will have a peel ply finish. So this means it's a rough texture, like it's not super rough, but it's good for future adhesion. Uh, but in this case, we will not need it. So I'll sand it flat. So that's why I've used some primer. So out of spray can, it's not to fill the holes. It's just to have like a good reference of where I need some more sanding and where not. So I'm trying to get the back as flat as possible. A good way to know if your plate is flat is just going over it with your hands and mostly you'll feel some dimples or not. And then you proceed to the next steps. So I covered the A sides. So the good sides 
with some uh, painter's tape till this point because I didn't want to have scratches because the surface was really good for, to start with. So no pinholes. And I, I knew that I was able to just start with a 1200 grit and then do some polishing and get it to a high gloss. So here is the polishing. So I'm just using some fine polishing compounds and just go over the plates till I'm happy with the results. So if you want to go further, you can even go higher than 1200 grits, but I think for a 3D printer, you don't need to have your surface being super smooth because this will have some impact on your adhesion of the plate. So here is the plate uh, mounted on the printer. So I talked about the Ender 3S, 3S1 in a past video. So if you missed that video, an annotation or like a card should pop up on the top right and in the description as well. So what I'm doing here is I'm trying like a first run to see the temperatures. So I set the printer to preheat at 60 degrees. I see that the bed plate is still a bit off. So I'm measuring about 52. So I might have to do some PID tuning with having the new build plates being mounted on this. So here I'm doing the leveling and this is like one of the downsides having clamps to have to hold it down uh, on to the the face uh, to print on. So it was just measuring first on the clamp, so I redid it. Uh, the CR Touch is doing a great job to measure, I think it's 16 points, just to have like, it won't level the bed, so you still have to do it manually, but this will like get out small imperfection out of your belt plate. Um, so here is the first print. Here you can see me. I'm just adjusting the Z height uh, while printing. So I went a bit higher uh, to start with and then I just lower it lo a little bit uh, by bit till I'm happy with like the, the good adhesion and the good dimensions between the nozzle and the bed plate. So here I'm just doing a 20 by 20 by 20 calibration cube. So it's always a good print. Uh, because you know if your measurements are right, uh, it's easy to print. At, I think it took about 50 minutes on a 0.4 nozzle, 0.2 layer height. And this was like the first test to see if adhesion is good on this plate. And as you can see, the adhesion is good. It works a bit like a suction cup with the brim around it. So, um, so far I'm happy. So it's not sticking like I had with the PC uh, flex plate and it gives you a nice finish on the bottoms. Like the extra um, good thing like you get is you get that 3D weave of the carbon fiber into the bottom of your part as well. So here is like the benchmark of benchmarks. So the Benchy, I'm trying it because sometimes this is like a complex part, especially here, like when the windows are being built, uh, it's easy for the nozzle to knock your parts um, off the bill plate, but this went well. So, um, so far so good. Uh, and now like for the main question, Mathieu, why would I need a carbon fiber bed? I'll be honest. So if you use a glass bed, you should be as good as this. It just has some benefits of having like a low thermal expansion. So carbon fiber is good having low expansion under heat and it's a good thermal conductor. So the lightweight is a bonus as well, um, but mainly like the thermal conductor is doing it for me. So it's good to hold temperatures, heat up quickly and slow down in heat when needed. So the PID will work on that, but it will stay stable under different temperatures as well as the plates not bowing because of the strength of carbon fiber. And like I mentioned, the low weight is good as well because you might want the lowest weight as possible on your bed. So many improvements will come in the future. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe, leave a like. Uh, don't forget to ring that bell for future videos and see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.